Hello, good evening. Uh, Ash in London here again with another top ten. Um, although this is more of a, a shopper's guide again, should we say. Uh, I'm going to do gonna talk about ten books um, from my collection here. Ten that I'd recommend people to um, try and get hold of. Most of them are still available. One of them I'm not quite sure about, um, which you'll see shortly. Um, I, I did a, um, a video about... Uh, uh, music biographies a while ago, a few weeks ago now, um, and I think then I said I was going to do um, a top ten on picture books, but uh, these, are, these are a bit more than just picture books. It sounds a bit like children's books, and it's the same picture books, but these are kind of bigger, general, kind of like um, books that have a bit of biography, a bit of facts and figures, uh, a lot of photographs, a lot, all kinds of things, um, and I've just chosen ten uh, to show you here this evening, I thought you might might find it interesting. Um, I was going to do this uh, video a bit um, sooner than this, but because um, I wanted to include a book on the Stone Roses by a guy called Dennis Morris, who's a photographer, and they had this, he did this book, amazing book called This Is the One. Uh, but the thing is, it's not with me here. It's, uh, it's, by, it's over in the UK, and I haven't been able to get it back. And it's a little bit too precious and heavy to send in the post. It's a limited edition of a thousand printed, so I didn't want to trust it uh, all this way around the world in the in the mail. It would have cost a fortune as well because it weighs a ton. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I've, uh, I've managed to find a replacement for it in this list. I mean, I've, I've been buying music books for a long time. Uh, I've, I've had many over the years. Some I've kept. Some have. Uh, have gone by the wayside. Uh, these are just ten that so I really, really en enjoy flicking through from time to time. Um, I've not read all of them cover to cover yet. I've read a couple of them, but um, you you'll see as well as we go through. Anyway, ten music books that I would recommend. And uh, so that's kind of, kind of like reverse order, but uh, not really. <laughs> Okay, come on in at number ten. This is the uh, the last minute replacement. It's uh, I wasn't officially going, originally going to show this one because it's not on a particular act, but um, I'm showing it because the first music book I ever bought, and I bought it in 1976. It's the New Musical Express Book of Rock, the illustrated New Musical Express Book of Rock, which is uh, came out in 1976, like I say, and it was just great. It really um, built up my kind of knowledge and. Um, of music in general, really, and introduced me to lots of bands because I was already into it. You know, through school, I was always into a lot of music, a lot of bands. But this kind of opened me up to, um, you know, more kind of genres, more kind of groups, more solo artists, particularly American bands because there's a lot of American bands that weren't that well known in the UK. Um, bands like the Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, they they were known, but they weren't the huge stars. And uh, well, other bands like Spirit and um, who else? Velvet Underground, for example, uh, Frank Zappa, people like that. But uh, I've actually got a bit organised uh, with this. You know, I've actually uh, marked some pages. But um, but it is just just a great book. And I'd, I'd left school, started working. This is one of the first things I bought with my uh, hard-earned cash. Uh, this was the kind of layout at the time. And um, there's one of the B pages with the birds and uh, Eric Burden there. Um, the, the only problem is with these encyclopedias, um, like I say, this came out in 76, they're immediately out of date, and um, particularly with this one coming out when it did, it was just before punk hit the scene, and suddenly there was loads more bands that really should have been in here. There's a from the H, George Harrison, Hotwind. But yeah, it was just um, a really, really cool cool book to get into. Uh, this is one I have read from cover to cover eventually. I read it, I was just racing through it when I first got it. There's another, well, I'm Matt's another page here. Who have we got on this page? Oh, no one. I've marked these pages, but it's not quite working as I thought it was. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got here. Oh, 10cc and Thin Lizzy, so it's a T page. There we go. So, yeah, so just a really, really cool book to, to, to have, and I'm glad I've kept it. It's um, looking a bit tatty at the moment, the dust cover's a bit shoddy, but um, yeah, it was um, yes, really, really, um, like I say, cool book to have. But, um, one interesting thing about this from nowadays is um, the uh, the album sleeves that are featuring it. There's uh, over 300 record sleeves where we used in this book, and they had to, had, to, had to actually be photographed to put in, because now you just find them online, download them or whatever, or do screenshots or whatever. But these were actually, um, and they were uh, were um, lent out by uh, Virgin Megastore in Marble Arch to be photographed for, um, for this actual book, so... Um, that kind of like puts it, uh, puts it in a little time warp there, doesn't it? And then one thing also that, I was, that puzzled me for years was who the hell is that band on the front? Uh, first I thought it was Cream, but I thought, oh, maybe not. And then uh, Budgie, perhaps, but no. 
Now, on the back we have a Pink Floyd there at the bottom, although printed in reverse, which is something that happens quite often to Pink Floyd for some reason. But the front always really puzzled me. I didn't know who it was, but I've done some recent research, and it turns out it's a band called Quiver, who were kind of a soft rock band in the 70s, weren't really that big. They teamed up with the Sutherland Brothers, and then became known as Sutherland Brothers and Quiver. Um, Southern Blues are famous for writing Sailing, the uh, Rod Stewart song but um, uh, to be now found out who they are, I'm still curious as to why they were chosen for the, the front cover of the Encyclopedia of Rock so uh, maybe they thought they were going to be uh, the next big thing but it um, you know, didn't really happen. But anyway, uh, 1976 it was published by uh, Hamlin, a new musical express book of rock the first music book I bought when I was a mere teenager, okay Coming in at number nine, this is uh, much more recent, this was published in 2002, but it's uh, about a band from my teenage years, it's called Perpetual Change, it's a book about Yes, and there, there wasn't, I was, I was always kind of hanging out for um, a Yes book, um, there was a few around, there was, um, there was a big one called Views, which is about Roger Dean's artwork for all their sleeves, but uh, this was the, um, the one that uh, I was really waiting for, and it's um, just a really, really cool book, it's got everything you need to know about the band, really. I mean, obviously, Yes is still going, um, so since 2002, quite a lot has happened. Um, there's no original members left in the band now. Um, I, mean, even, I mean, Steve Howe's been with them a long time, but uh, he wasn't in the on the first two albums, for example. But um, it's just it's interesting. But the only downside is it's um, mostly in black and white. Most of the shots are black and white. Um, let's see, like that. There's a little colour section in the middle. Um, it has uh, quite a few of the... Like the logo there and some album shots and there's uh, some yeah, there's, uh, Steve Howe, Chris Squire and Rick Wayman oh, Mark has fallen out shots like that but generally it is just black and white but it's, it's got loads of information in it one thing I found quite interesting was um, things like this um, this was one of their shows in the States in 1970, 1976 and that's how big they were back in the 70s and you tend to forget things like that they were huge. That was at the JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, uh, which is the same stadium that was used for the American leg of Live Aid. So um, they, they were a pretty big band at the time, you know, and um, we tend to forget that nowadays. Now they're just back on the old theatre circuit or whatever. Um, what is good about this, it has a massive guide at the back, the Collect Yes Collector's Guide, to pretty much uh, everything, records, even bootlegs, recommend bootlegs. Uh, all this kind of stuff, there's loads of stuff at the back um, and then the, a, a gig guy goes through all the, all the gigs through the years up up until this point when this was published uh, even, even the bands that were um, yeah there's a, some of the, the tour guide there some of the, um, uh, what do they call it now? gigography they call it, aren't they? Um, even some of the bands that the um, side projects and the bands that they are the um, the, the guys were in before we joined Yes as well so you got you know, some of the early uh, shows by John Anderson and Chris Squire and so on but uh, well, Yes is a really interesting book a must for any Yes fan for any prog fan and any music fan in general really it's a forward by Rick Waitman so it's got the blessing of the band I imagine, well it's got the blessing of Rick Waitman anyway so there you go Perpetual Change, all about Yes oh, it's written by um, a guy called David Watkinson who um, I don't know much about but uh, He's done a really good job. That was well, well put together. Okay, another band that um, I've always been waiting for a really, really good book. And there's been a few. I've read a few of their um, biographies, and they're a little bit um, unreliable. Some of them. Um, talking about Led Zeppelin, uh, I read Hammer of the Gods and thinking, hmm, not quite sure. Is this some of this, is all this true? You know, it's like because there's such a mystery about the band, uh, even at the time. There was sort of like you know a bit cagey about interviews and things, and. Um, I think the some of the legends grew a bit. The urban myths about them grew a bit out of, out of proportion. But uh, this next book, uh, so on my list at number eight, came out in two thousand and eight, uh, and I think it's a really good good place to start if you want to get some Led Zeppelin books. It's, it's called. It's not very originally titled. It's called a Whole Lot of Led Zeppelin, <laughs> and it's by um, who is it by? Who is it by? A guy called John Breen, who I think is a U.S. Um, music journalist. But it's just a really really nice, right chunky book. It's a uh, Done in the Darlin and Kingsley um, uh, DK style, you know, like those old travel books where I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I've got a page mark here. It's got loads of things like this and loads of concert tickets from around the, uh, from over the years, and uh, loads of things in here. Loads of interviews and snippets and comments from various music journalists over the years. 
loads of posters and um, on this one for example it's got the fear anyone remembers or if anyone saw my prodigy uh, ranking their um, album sleeve uh, Invaders Must Die features that same photograph of the, uh, the French airship and uh, it's, it's really very hard, <laughs> very hard to ma manoeuvre this actually but um, yeah it's just great, got loads of really great live shots there's um, shots of the there's one of Jimmy Page's guitars there which is really cool and um, yeah just everything you want posters, magazine clippings magazine covers, all kinds of shots backstage passes, just like loads of really um, interesting stuff bit of a biography, and there was a section at the back where it um, discusses the albums and it goes right up to um, the uh, 2007 reunion show uh, at the London O2 Arena with old um, Jason Bond and their own drums so uh, that's where it goes up to um, to be honest they've not really done much since then really have they a few re-releases and remasters but uh, anyway so there that's a um, good book to get on Zeppelin whole lot of Led Zeppelin and published by who was it published by Voyager Press in um, 2008 and quite heavy okay um this this young lady I'd already done an album ranking of and um during that ranking I did say she's one of the most photographed people in the world and it's Lady Gaga and now uh, this is an unofficial book but it's really great it's just called Gaga um, I actually found it in a bargain bin. Um, it uh, has a biography in it, loads of photographs. You can't go, if you want to see some good Gaga photographs, um, have all that on the back there, she's looking rather fabulous there. Uh, it's just really, really cool. It only goes up to 2010. Um, that's which when, it, when it was published. It's by, uh, by a guy called, what's he called? Um, Johnny Morgan, the guy that wrote it. And put it together, but it's just just really cool. It's got loads of um, early shots of her, like um, shots of her on stage when she was in in, in early days. Um, loads of um, oh, loads of stuff with her costumes. Though. It's just phenomenal. Some of the stuff she's wearing. Loads of um, bits from magazine interviews and magazine covers. There's loads of stuff. Loads of great live shots. Just really, really well put together. With uh, I mean, you can just I can show you every photograph, and it's just amazing. You know, but. Uh, That'll take all day. But yeah, it's um really, 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 really cool book. So, um, and yeah, it's, like I say, it mentions all the early days. There's bits, bits about her parents in here and her family and her ins inspiration. And uh, a little picture of Freddie there. A picture of her meeting the Queen. And a picture of uh, the Queen himself, Freddie. Um, of course, you got the name Gaga from the, the Queen song, Radio Gaga. So, But yeah, really, really... Um, Nicely put together book. It just goes up to say 2010, so it's only early years, covers the first two albums. Kind of finishes around the Monsters Ball tour around that era. Uh, she's one I, I saw her, I um, was really into her by then, and um, recommended. Um, I, I, why it was in the bargain bin, I've no idea, because it's, it is a really superb book. Well, maybe, they, maybe they printed too many, but uh, I'm sure it's still around somewhere in the world. Okay, um, Another band like Led Zeppelin um, is uh, Pink Floyd, who I've uh, I've actually got loads of books, but I think I could probably do a top ten on my Pink Floyd book collection, but I, but I won't because that'd be a bit boring. Um, what I'm actually going to show you here is that the latest Pink Floyd book I got is actually a catalogue. It's called uh, Their Mortal Remains, and it came out in um, 2017, which was the same year they had their um, exhibition, also called Their Mortal Remains, at the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And uh, this catalogue is just, you know, superb. I mean, going to the exhibition must be enough, but, you know, get to the catalogue as well. But the thing about it is you don't really need to have gone to the exhibition to uh, really appreciate this book. I mean, um, I love the variation on the Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> it's really there for the cover, but it's just chocker. I mean, this was the third major exhibition in London that I went to about a, a rock artist. David Bowie and the Rolling Stones had done them previously. And... Uh, Pink Floyd being Pink Floyd, has had to get to this, and it was just really, really cool. I mean, there's so much stuff there to see. Uh, you got all this kind of stuff right from the early days, um, you know, photographs and um, things from the Sid Barrett era. That that was one of their um, liquid projectors that they used to use in their early shows, all covered in ink. Um, what else have we got in here? 
Yeah, there's loads. I see one thing that was really cool about it. So loads of their instruments were there. They're, they're just they must be in storage somewhere in the Pink Floyd collection. And this is um, some of their early keyboards and synthesizers. Um, this one here is the the VCS three, which was um, predominantly used on Dark Side of the Moon. But they look, just look so antique now. I mean, I remember seeing these and in magazine articles at the time, I'm thinking, "Wow, look at that. that's a." So space age, but they look at it now, and it's, uh, it's got a joystick and all these huge buttons and flashing lights and things. And uh, I'm not quite sure what the other keyboard is. Yeah, a DKI keyboard. I think that was perhaps played as part of it, but um, just that's really great stuff. And uh, of course, being a big Gilmore fan, um, it's quite good to see a lot of these in close up. A lot of uh, Gilmore's guitars. There's um, there's one of his um, Fenders there. Gilmore uh, messing about with it, and on the top there, you got a little notebook, one of Roger Waters' uh, notebooks with the lyrics to what is it? Oh, it's lyrics to Have a Cigar. Yeah, just um, sketching down there. All, all these things were in the exhibition, it was just so cool to see them. Um, you know, and lots of little sketches for their um, album sleeve ideas from the various artists. Well, this was an interesting one, them the sketches for the um, statues on the um, cover of Division Bell. Those things like that. The statues were, I think I mentioned on my Floyd run, uh, ranking that the uh, sculptures were there actually in the in the exhibition. They're huge, but uh, yeah, it was just absolute pleasure to see all this. There's, um, what's that? That's uh, some kind of a uh, stage setup design going on there. But um, just brilliant. Yeah, I mean, um, still available from the VNA um, gallery shop. It's also available in the hardback edition, but. Uh, when you're travelling, uh, these things are heavy enough as they are, but when you just start going over your baggage limit if you buy too many of these things. And you get the hardback edition, it's probably twice the weight, but um, well worth investing in for any, um, any serious Floyd fan. You know, uh, their Mortal Remains, uh, published by the VNA from 2017. That's uh, number six. My um, little book ranking here, our book, book rundown. Okay, number five. Uh, um, Oh, excuse me, I have a quick swig of water. This next one is very dear to my heart. <laughs> it's um, the Iron Maiden onboard flight 666 book, which I did get in hardback. And uh, this came out, this, this was published in um, 2013, and it's basically just a picture book. This is a picture book, mostly photographs, that just covers the two tours they did on the um, Air Force One, uh, Boeing 757. Um, two tours but it was a uh, somewhere back in time and the final frontier tour now somewhere back in time tour i saw twice i saw in two different hemispheres uh final frontier tour i didn't actually get to see i kind of missed that one but um i've got some good photographs of it in here and to be honest it wasn't um one of the one of my favorite albums of theirs but i have seen them since and uh, now of course they're um, they've upgraded to a 747 for um, for their flights but um this was just brilliant i mean um uh, the whole the whole package that came with this the, the film and the, the live album the tour and the book and uh, this was um one thing i didn't i didn't get from the shows was the actual concert program and i thought this is much better than a concert program because it's what was it 25 quid yeah 25 pound and i think you pay 20 pound for a program and this is just way better way better than a program and it's just brilliant and one thing one my, well, i'll show you my favorite shot in here that's uh, the shot from the stage at Twickenham Stadium in London. Uh, I'm in there somewhere. I'm in there with my mate Matt and uh, one of my boys was with me. You know, aged eight years old, so that was a that was a huge treat for him. So um, yeah, it was just just really really cool. But there's loads, as you can imagine, loads of live live you know live shots. Um, quite a bit about the aircraft as well, which was of course piloted by um, Bruce Dickinson. You know, most of the time. Uh, great, like I say, great live shots. Just, um, it's a really, really great book to have, really. For good for me, there's old Bruce on the back there, and he's a uh, trooper mode. But uh, it was just, it was brought all that, brought it all back from the tours, really, from the those those two shows I saw, which was really, really cool. So um, yeah, happy memories. Um, published by Orion Books. Uh, the photographs were done by uh, John McMurtry, who's a, I think is their official press photographer, is it? Yeah, the official band photographer. And there's just tons of them in here, tons of them. It's real good coffee table stuff. Just flick through it and, and uh, 
put it back, flick through it again the following day. You'll always find something interesting to look at in here. It's really, really cool. Anyway, that's enough for that. Number five in my uh, music book rundown, I made an onboard flight 666. Okay. Right, you can't have a music book ranking without mentioning the Beatles, because they've had one or two books uh, published about them, I think. I've got quite a few, actually. And quite a few, and I was, uh, I was thinking, I've got to include the Beatles, because they're just such a, you know, such an influential band, and um, such a well-documented band as well, with not just books, with anything. But um, I was trying to, well, which one do I feature here? So I thought, oh, this is this was a good one. This is one I really, I really enjoyed when I, when I got it. I actually bought it from a second-hand shop. So it was recycling. And it was published in uh, 1994. And it's um, by a guy called Terence Spencer, photographer. And it's called It Was 30 Years Ago Today. And it um, features uh, four months in their existence, uh, 63 to 64. Um, the four months that Terrence Spencer spent time travelling around with them, travelling to gigs, uh, press conferences, just hotels all over the place. And it's uh, just a really, really nice document of that era, just a little pocket of time in the Beatles era. When they were getting really big, the Beatlemania had just kicked off big time. They were some the most talked about band ever. And uh, it was just a really, it must have been a really exciting time. Um, to be, I mean, we got a shop like this... Um, this doesn't look too exciting. This is this sums up their existence, being the, in a, driven to the next show or the next meeting or the next uh, press conference. There's uh, some cool shots of the um, the fans, you know, the screaming fans, all over the place. And there's one uh, one shot in here I found. It. I thought, well, one of my favourites actually is really good. Is um, the band the boys are uh, giving an autograph to a policeman. <laughs> Because a lot of the places they didn't. This is early days of this this kind of thing, and never really happened much before. A lot of these papers they didn't have organised security, so there's all these uh, policemen, bobbies with the, the, with the helmets there. Uh, there are security at all the theatres and things. It didn't look. I mean, nowadays it looks quite comical to see them there, but to see them get a um, get an autograph of John Lennon and Paul McCartney it was uh, pretty cool. But just some really nice uh, informal shots as well backstage, having a chat there with uh, Mick Jagger. Uh, one, thirty, well, well, uh, one shot that I really liked of this is a uh, very beginning. There's a shot here on the, on the stage in Manchester, taken from the stage at the Manchester Apollo, uh, which is a concert venue um, I've been many times. In fact, it's the one I've been to the most. Obviously, I was too young to see the Beatles there, but I did see Paul McCartney there at the same theatre um, years later when he was in Wings. So there you go, that's um, from 1994, yeah, it was 30 years ago today, I bought the Beatles by um, Terence Spencer. Like I say, I got this second hand, whether it's still available as a new book or not, I don't really know, I just have to pick it up at a book fair some, somewhere. It's published by Bloomsbury, so um, try and find it, I recommend it. Okay, um, that, like the Floyd exhibition, the next one is a catalogue, uh, this was the very first one. That kind of started it. I'm not quite sure if any others. Have, I mean, I've been to three. And I'm not quite sure if any other acts. I think ABBA have done an exhibition, but this was the first one. It was uh, David Bowie. Uh, this was published in uh, 2013. Again, the V&A Museum, and it just so superb. Um, I took one of my boys to see this, and he really enjoyed it without even knowing much about Bowie at all. So that just shows really. But uh, like, like the Pink Floyd. Um, Exhibition is just full of interesting bits and pieces. Uh, got one here. This is um, Bowie's actual sketches of his idea for the Ashes to Ashes video. So that's quite interesting. They're nice little pieces of art in their own right. And um, of course, costumes were a big thing with Bowie. And um, oh, actually, yeah, what have we got here? Oh, yeah, another synthesizer. This is a, a synthesizer. What's it called? The EMS Synthy AKS. That's the actual one that was used on Heroes by um, Eno and Bowie. So that was quite interesting. Uh, yeah, well, what's what was talking about? I was talking about costumes, wasn't I? Although, I'm not getting to the costumes yet. Because here is the um, lyrics to Rebel Rebel. They were there as well. So there's all that kind of stuff. And of course, this was um, 2013, so Bowie was, was still around. So it wasn't like a in retrospect things, so it was, a, it was still very exciting. I mean, if you had the exhibition on now, it would be a different 
mood to it, I imagine. But um, but yeah, there's loads of them um, costume shots, like a close up to this. What's this one from? Designed by Bowie himself, that one. So well, yeah, there's loads of things. So some of them are more um, more well known than others. Let's find a find a well known costume. Oh yeah, this one. This was the Earthling, I think, was it? That's one of his later costumes, but uh, but yeah, it was just great. There's loads of um, loads of really cool shots of the man himself. There was huge um, posters and photographs and all kinds of things at the exhibition. It was just really, really, really good. And um, oh, okay. <laughs> imagine wearing those things like that nowadays. Amazing, but just really, really great. And there he is on the back. That's how he was looking at the time. That was one of, obviously one of the outtakes from the Aladdin Insane um, photo shoot. So, um, yeah, it was just really good. The, the exhibition was called David Bowie Is. David Bowie Is Inside. It was the name of the, the catalogue. V&A, still, still available at the V&A um, bookstore. Or souvenir store, is it called? Gift shop. And yeah, um, David Bowie Is from 2013. Number three in my um, music book. Top ten here. Number two, again, second-hand purchase of mine. I bought this. Um, I remember when it came out, and it was I couldn't find it anywhere new, and I think it was quite actually quite expensive. And then I suddenly found it in a rather obscure second-hand bookshop. Uh, it's a book about prints, and it's called Twenty One Nights. And uh, oh, what a chunky one! Another, another chunky one. They're all chunky ones, these, aren't they? And uh, this um, this came out in two thousand and eight, um, and it was a uh, just basically it was about the photo photographer uh, Randy Saint Nicholas, and it's all based around his twenty one night residency at the London O uh, two Arena, um, where he sort of I think they were all sold out. It wasn't consecutive. I think there was a chunk here and a chunk there, but it was all pretty much over the same period of time. Um, obviously, I, I, I didn't get there. Um, oh, I, was, I was I was here in New Zealand, and it was uh, just difficult to get over there at the time. Uh, some sh a show would have loved to have seen, but um, and this is just a, like a photo documentary of it. It's, um, and it's just really, really nicely put together. It comes in this little slip case. If we can get it off. There we go. Oops. And there's a cover itself but yeah it's just really it is a, just a nice work of art really um, it features it's got a lot of live shots um, from from the shows but there's lots of other things like um, you know, showcasing his uh, the back of musicians things like that there uh, so I just found a nice live shot of Prince somewhere it's quite quite um, heavy paper actually it's very uh, very well um, well bound and everything it's just really really well put together there he is on stage a lot of purple of course got through a lot of purple ink for this book see on stage there Ooh. losing my strength <laughs> these books are a bit too heavy um, and then some real cool backstage stuff there he is messing about backstage at the O2 but yeah it's just a really really nice good good art book actually as well and away from the music just really um, some really really nice photography in there now it also comes one thing that um, I thought was brilliant. It was actually still in there as well. It comes with a, uh, um, a CD. If we can get it out, it's just popped in this little um, little wallet. And the CD is called Indigo Nights. Now there's a um, there's a bar at the um, O2 called the Indigo Bar, and uh, apart from doing these twenty one sold out shows at the, he was he was playing lots of after show parties as well. And this is a, like a little compilation of uh, some of those after-show parties that he was playing at. So, um, some of his own stuff, some covers. There's a cover of Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love on there, which is pretty good. But uh, that was um, that was a nice little addition to find in there. It's published by Simon and Schuster, I think. And um, yeah, it came out in 2000, uh, 2008. Um, again, of course, Prince, sadly no longer with us. Left us the same year as Bowie. So... Um, now, actually, Prince would be an interesting subject for an exhibition. Get some of his things there. He's got some interesting bits and pieces of, uh, from his career. Some of those guitars are quite bizarre of his. Can't get the thing back in there to the slipcase. In we go. Let's be careful with this. Right, so there we go. That's number two in my uh, music book. 
top ten. Uh, our number one, the chunkiest of all of these at the moment, actually. Not quite as chunky as the Stone Roses one that, um, that's not here, <laughs> but this was... Um, and when I, when I first got this, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe the research that had gone into it, and uh, the, the contents was just f too much. Phenomenal. It's uh, written by Bill Wyman. It gives you a hint of uh, which band it's about. It's about Rolling Stones, and it's called Rolling with the Stones by um, Darling Kindersley, DK. Like I mentioned, the Led Zeppelin book was, um, I think, tried to look a bit like one of these books, but no one quite does it like DK. And it's just absolutely chocker with information. I mean, the Rolling Stones are so lucky to have Bill Wyman in the lineup because uh, he kept all these diaries of the tours, the recording sessions, and everything that they did, and all the personal things, and all, all kinds of stuff. He collected stuff, he kept things, and um, which is great for the fans and, and getting books, but it was probably good for the rest of the band as well because I can imagine, particularly Keith and Mick, probably wouldn't know what's going on half the time and couldn't remember a lot of it. So, um, good on him for um, doing all this, but it's just absolutely chock of his stuff. Um, a lot of it is from his viewpoint, so he gets a lot of the... starts off, because um, Bill Wyman's in his 80s now, he was born just before the outbreak of World War Two. so it's got a bit about the war years and um, his early life and his influences. So, um, there's a picture of him there in uniform, he was doing his national service in the army. And then uh, all about his influences and people he was into, like Buddy Holly and stuff. But it just just goes on and on, and uh, every every spread is just full of amazing information um, about the tours, about the record releases, about their interviews, and about them, the the videos he made, films he made, all kinds of things. This is just a typical example of one of the spreads. Um, whenever there was a tour featured on the, cause it's all it's like it's like biographical as well it starts in the early days right th up to after Bill Wyman left to be honest there's always a little map um, with the, the tours they were on all the dates which dates were cancelled and tickets and you know all kinds of stuff right up to um you know really you know, the later days like right, right through to the 70s another another shot of them on stage like the Beatles on stage in Manchester there at the Free Trade Hall which is another venue I used to go to quite a lot back in the 70s and then, because uh, Bill Wyman left the band in uh, 1990, um, but he carried on. There was a great shot of Keith there. What tour was this on? This was 1979, was it? Great shot of Keith there on stage somewhere in the States. But uh, yeah, he um, left the band in 1990, but still continued um, in, in this book. He sort of does a little bit about the later tours, like the um, Bridges, Bridges to Babylon tour and the... Um, what was one before it? Can't remember now. There's Bridges to Babylon and let's see, got Steel Wheels. Yeah, Steel Wheels tour, which is one he was on. There's a bit about Steel Wheels album release. And then he left. And then he actually says, "Oh yeah, the um, the gigs got bigger and bigger." Voodoo Lambs, that was the other one. And the gigs got bigger and bigger after he'd gone. And, and now, of course, they're touring fairly regularly on the huge stadium shows, places like Copacabana Beach and um, all these, every country in the world you can imagine they can go into nowadays. Um, but there, this was just a, an incredible book. I mean, just looking at the cover, the amount of uh, stuff is on there, I'll take you a while to just look through that and see what everything, what, what it is that's on there. But anyway, so there you go. That's, um, oh, this is the heaviest of the lot. Rolling with the Stones by uh, Bill Wyman is my uh, number one um, pick on this top ten uh, shopper's guide to music books. So there you go. Gosh, okay. They're certainly heavier than vinyl, those books. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Was, uh, just ten music books uh, I could, I'd recommend and ones that I've enjoyed looking at over the years. I know some of them are quite recent actually, so... Um, uh, <clears throat> some of them, um, like I say, I've, I've only read that one book cover to cover, but um, the rest of them, there's, there's always something, it's good, good to pick up from time to time, and quite handy for reference, if you want, Ooh, what, what year did they do this, and you go, well, look at that book, anyway, there you go, so um, that's my uh, top ten for books um, for now, and um, there's only more videos coming your way soon, so thank you for being there, and I'll say bye for now, bye bye.